Hi, this is Matt with AppliancePartsPros.com. Today we'll be showing you how to repair your appliance. Remember, anytime you work on an appliance, make sure it's unplugged or the circuit breakers are off so there's no chance of electrocution. In this video, we're going to show you how to change out the Frigidaire washer, idler, pulley spring. It's going to be a very easy repair and it's only take a few minutes to show you how to do it. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can click on the link below or get it at AppliancePartsPros.com. When you open up the package, you're going to get the new idler pulley spring. The idler pulley spring puts tension on the belt. The main reason you be changing it out is if it's failed and the belt is loose and the washer won't agitate or spin. In order to get to the part, we have to lift up this washer top. First thing we're going to do is put a piece of tape across the lid so that when we tilt it back, this doesn't fall and bang on the console. Then we're going to take a putty knife and there's two locking clips, one on each side. All you have to do is follow it in until you hit them. Then you can depress it and twist the putty knife a little bit to release the clip. The one on this side is done the same way. Once you have both tabs released, you can lift the top up. You want to be careful on this one because there's no hinge stops to stop it from falling all the way back. There's these little brackets here, but they aren't that heavy duty. Or you can put a towel across the lip right here and then rest that against the back wall. Or you can make a lanyard like we have to support the top. Now that we have the top out of the way, we can take the front panel off. There's two screws at the bottom. We're going to use our Phillips screwdriver to take them out. Now that we have the screws out of the bottom of the panel, we have to push the front panel down so we can release the four tabs and pull it out. Once you have it off the machine, you can set it aside. Now that we have the front panel off the washer, we have access to the belt. It's located right here underneath the motor pan. This is the idler pulley. We're going to push in on that to remove the tension from the belt so we can take it off the pulleys. Once you have it off the idler pulley, you can get it off the motor pulley and then off the transmission pulley on the other side. Once you have it off, you can pull it out. Now that we have the belt out, we can remove the idler pulley. Before we try to take it out, we're going to lift this whole assembly back and up as much as we can because the shaft that the idler pulley mounts on is pretty close to this hump right here that's in the bottom of the washer and you won't be able to get the idler pulley off. So we're going to take a big screwdriver and lift this up and back and then put a piece of wood underneath here to support it. Once you have the piece of wood underneath there, you can take the screwdriver out and then we can take off the clip that holds the idler pulley onto the shaft. Before we remove the idler pulley spring, if you look above the spring and next to the motor, you'll see that there are a few different holes that it can mount in. You need to make a mark next to the one that yours is in so you'll know what hole to put it back in later. Underneath we're going to reach in here with a flat blade screwdriver and just turn it so it takes the spring out of the motor mount clip. Once you have it off, then you can move the idler pulley fairly easy so we have access to the shaft down here. To get the idler pulley a little bit more out of the way, we're going to take a big screwdriver and kind of jam it in behind the support frame and push the idler pulley over a little bit so we have access to the shaft. Once you have access to the shaft, you're going to reach in with a small flathead screwdriver and pop this little C-clip off. Make sure you don't lose it. Once you get the clip off, it'll usually fall straight down and the two washers will fall with it. So we're going to reach in and grab all those. Once you have the clip and the washers off, we can take the screwdriver out and set it aside. Then we can let the idler pulley drop off the shaft. If it won't go all the way down, you can try to push from this side like I just did and it'll slide it over to the back so it pops out. Once you have it out, you can pull the idler pulley and the spring and the spacer out. 
Here's the old idler pulley spring next to the new one. If you already have one of these, great. If not, you can get it at appliancepartspros.com. To put the new spring in, we're going to take the idler pulley and we have to put the spring and the spacer in it together. It's kind of tricky. You're going to have to hold it together and slide it in all as an assembly. But the spacer goes inside the spring and then the spring goes inside the idler pulley. You want to make sure that this end is on the top. This is where it has to clip into that hole that we made a mark earlier on. Once you have it all together, you want to carefully line it up and slide it back in onto the post. Once you have it on there, you want to make sure that the spring didn't move and it's actually going up into the shaft like this. And then we can spin it around. And just like before, we're going to take the big screwdriver and put it in there to hold it out of the way so we can put the clip and the washers on. And then you want to make sure you push up on the idler pulley so it's all the way at the top of the shaft and you have as much room as possible at the bottom to put those washers and the clip on. We're going to make sure the spring washer is on top and the gold washer is on the bottom. Then we're going to hold it in place while we use the needle nose to put the C-clip back on. Once you have the washers in place, then we can put the C-clip on. Once you have the C-clip on, we can pull the screwdriver out of the way. Now that we have the idler pulley mounted, we have to put the spring into its little opening. The easiest way to do that is to bring the idler pulley past this little motor mounting bolt right here. It stops right there, but if you take a flathead screwdriver and just very carefully flex it down a little bit, you can pull the idler pulley past that bolt. and push it over. Once you have it all the way over, then we can reach back in and grab the spring and make sure we put it into the right hole so we get the right tension. Remember, you want to make sure it goes in the right hole that you have marked on the top. Once you have it in, then we can carefully flex it past that bolt again and get it back on the other side. Now that we have the new spring and the idler pulley mounted, we can put the belt back on the washer. Before we put the belt on, we're going to take the wood block out and set it aside. To put the belt on, we're going to start it underneath all the pulleys, especially the transmission pulley in the center. Once you have it in there, we're going to reach over here and grab the belt. And then we're going to make sure that the belt is around the motor pulley and the idler pulley. And then we're going to push in on the idler pulley to take any tension off the belt. And then we're going to reach in and make sure it's on the transmission pulley. And then spin the transmission pulley with the belt started, kind of like a bike chain. And then you'll hear it snap onto the back. Once it's on all the way, you can let go of the idler pulley and give it a spin to make sure it's properly routed through all the pulleys. Once you're sure it's routed properly, we can put the washer back together. Now we can put the front panel back on the washer. Remember we have to line up these four tabs with the four slots on the front of the frame and then lift the panel up to lock in place so we can put the screws in. Now that we have the panel in place, we can use our Phillips screwdriver to put the screws in that hold it in place. With the front panel back in place, we can go up top and put the top down. Lift up on the top a little bit and remove the lanyard. Then we can lower the top down and snap it into place. Once you have it snapped into place, we can take the tape off the lid. 
and then you can plug the machine back in and take it for a spin. Thanks for joining us for another successful repair brought to you by AppliancePartsPros.com. Check out our other repair videos on our site, Facebook, and YouTube.